Hi, for today's tutorial, we'll be talking about constraints. So constraint is a powerful mechanism for designers to quickly build complex responsive layouts. Here I have an image and I have added a vertical constraint and a horizontal constraint to it. So it is in the center of our canvas. When I preview and switch the canvas to different device size, the constraint makes sure that it is always in the centered position. So today we will introduce three ways to use constraints. First, let's start with position constraint. So by default, the system automatically adds a vertical constraint and a horizontal constraint to each element. You can see that there are two dash lines here. The dimensions under the constraint section indicates their distance to the page side. You can add a constraint by dragging the circle on each element. After I added a horizontal constraint, now when I drag this orange element, the horizontal distance keeps the same. And if I add another vertical element, this will lock their position together. After adding a constraint, you can change the distance of two elements by changing the numbers under the constraint section. By default, we're using pixels here. If you want to change the other responsive values, you can click on the input place to change. There's a small detail here. So when I am dragging and adding the constraint, when I hover on a point, I can see which border I'm actually adding on. So this is the left, this is the right side of the triangle. After adding the constraints, there is also an arrow line indicating the constraint relationship between two elements. When you hover on it, there's also the name of the border as well. Another way is to align vertical center. So here we connect the top of the square to the top of the triangle, and the bottom side to bottom side. The zigzag line means that now the square is aligned center to the triangle. So when I drag the triangle icon, the square always stays in center. Even when I change the height, it's still the same. You can also align one element to a specific border. Here I'm adding both sides of this red bubble to the right side of this yellow icon. So now even though the red bubble's width is changing, it still aligns to the right border. Second, let's talk about size constraint. Here I have three icons in the same size. I'm going to connect the triangle icon to the other two icons. Then when I change the size of the triangle icon from fix to fill, it will fill in the gap it has with the other two icons. Another way is to use hug in your container. Here I have two icons under this yellow container. When I change the container size to hug, the border snaps to the border of the children's. If I drag the icon, the container size will adapt to the icon's new position. You can also use this method with the padding feature. When I add a padding, there will be a fixed gap between the children and the parent container. A detail to notice here, if this container is in fixed size and there is a padding inside, when I'm adding a top constraint from the square, which is the children, to the container top, it aligns to the padding border instead of its actual top border. Last, let's talk about even spacing distribution. So these three icons are in an uneven spacing. When I choose distribute horizontal spacing, their gap becomes even and they're connected. So I can drag on the line to change the gap width. However, this connection is single-sided, which means that if you drag on one element and change its width, it will not influence the distance of another element. So let's make a quick recap today. So today we talk about what is a constraint and three ways to use your constraints, including position constraint, size constraint, and even spacing distribution. That's all for today's tutorial. Thanks for watching.